So when you see a shot like this, I know the first thing going through that enormous, like, bulbous brain of yours is, how did how did you make the uh, pressure meters? Which, of course, isn't what you're thinking, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. So, uh, in this tutorial, let, let, let's talk about how to make pressure or speedometer meters, which for some reason are on the machinery, even though it doesn't make any sense. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. Nice procedural, super fast. Uh, but for first, uh, sponsor, be right back. Oh hey, this tutorial is sponsored by Skillshare, and Skillshare is an online learning community where you can learn a whole bunch of skills. We're talking photography, videography, even Blender. Yes, there are Blender uh, tutorials over there. And on top of these courses, there's also online workshops so you can work simultaneously in the digital sense uh, with thousands of other people so you have accountability and you're more excited to learn this stuff and, you know, it will get you going. One course in particular I want to recommend is How to Make Merch with Draplin, which I feel like I've recommended before, um, is a course about not only me how to make the designs and stuff like this you, you probably already know that side but also marketing uh, logos and designs and stuff like that how do you put it on a t-shirt a hat you can watch that premium course or any course on Skillshare with the premium membership that is already uh, super affordable but I am here uh, to make that deal sweeter the first thousand of my subscribers to click that's right click the uh, link in the description are gonna get a free trial uh, to Skillshare premium membership which you know you get that free trial and then when it's over it's only ten dollars a month roughly uh, after after that. Okay, we're back. We're returning. We're we're, make, we're making meters. Uh, so first thing we need to do is we need to get a uh, image texture of a meter. We're going to base it off of this and then do the needle um, in 3D and all this and just tie everything together with glass. Um, so go to Google Images, type in pressure meter or speedometer or really just any image of whatever, you know, it is that you want to recreate. I typed in pressure meter <laughs> into Google Images. I'm going to click the first result, which is it a 342 uh, pixel square image? Yes. Am I going to download it anyway? I'll say yes. So download an image. I'm just going to call mine meter. Um, and beyond that, we're good to go. By the way, uh, you're going to see that there's a needle um, inside of this image. Again, useful. However, we want to be uh, removing that so we can add in our own needle. So load in a uh, program. It could be GIMP. It can be Photoshop. Any image editor at all that has a clone stamp. Just bring in your image and we're just going to quickly uh, delete this needle before moving on. Um, so quick clone stamp or whatever it's called in your program. I think they're all called the same thing everywhere. Uh, long story short, you control click an area that doesn't have the needle that samples it and then you drag and that is going to copy um, information of in this case mainly white into areas where there's no needle and I'm just going to do this like super sloppy uh, spe I mean, especially because it doesn't really matter too much, uh, but also because you know not that much. I don't even know what my second reason was. I'm like, generate a second one. Like your brain will catch up and, and not make you look stupid. But here we are. Um, so just clean up the needle. Doesn't need to be perfect. Again, this is meant to be just a small part of your scene. It's not like an extreme uh, close up on this uh, thing. So it does not need to be perfect. I'm just going to go a tiny bit more in and then we're going to call it done. It's better to decrease size as you're going in for fine details just to get rid of uh, some of this ghosting. And that doesn't look perfect, <laughs> uh, but I think it looks uh, passable enough. So uh, once you're done uh, removing the thing, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to file, you're gonna save it or export it or whatever your program calls it. We're gonna call it meter clean because we uh, cleaned up the streets as we're driving through the streets with the speedometer meter. Okay, save it, perfect. Um, now we get into the fun part, uh, which is Blender and making it uh, 3D and all this. So uh, open up Blender uh, now that we have this image. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by making the base of it. So the thing that has the image texture. So I'm just going to add in a uh, circle. We can go full screen here. Uh, more geometry is better, but slower. But in this case, so little geometry doesn't matter. So increase the vertex count. Uh, tab for edit mode, F for fill. You've made a uh, circular face. Um, and now we just need to make the meter uh, exist in here. So. Fast way to do this, go to shading. We need to make a material, uh, make a uh, material with an image texture. Which image texture? The one that we just made. So the uh, meter clean dot JPEG, uh, which you're going to see um, loads onto here uh, incorrectly. Like it just looks white and th th there is a material going on here. You just can't see it. Uh, reason is we're using a UV coordinates. So we need to pick some good uh, UV coordinates. So uh, in your UV editing workspace, select your mesh U unwrap or project from view, whatever you want. I'm just going to be doing a, a normal unwrap and you're just going to make the UV take up uh, this section of the image. So we're just literally uh, stealing it and you can rotate it uh, to have it face the uh, correct direction. Okay, <laughs> so uh, there's our meter. Of course, we're, we're going to make it look better. So uh, once you've done this part, I'm just going to inset 
just to get this like circular element in the middle. So I'm just isolating uh, this uh, section, selecting that face, extruding on the Z axis to make it, you know, a bit more elevated than the rest, beveling, setting it down, perfect. <laughs> um, also, uh, if you wanna mess with the screws and you wanna do that, um, what I would recommend, hmm, we could just kind of reuse this. So I'm just gonna select this, control space bar to increase my selection. And then you could literally just duplicate this and then just uh, reposition it. So I'm putting this over the screw. Of course, we need to re-project this. So project from view to get a new unwrap. And now you're gonna sample the screw. So this is a very kind of, I mean, trademark Ian Hubert lazy way <laughs> to do this, uh, but it looks good. So uh, I have the screw. I'm not gonna duplicate it on the x-axis, maybe rotate it so it looks a bit different. Um, and now we have two screws and a thing. Um, if you wanna make it look even better uh, than it does right now, so this is the meter material, uh, we can actually make a second material that's metallic uh, for those sections, which is super easy, right? You just make another material, use the same one. So two material slots, same material. Second one is gonna be meter metallic because, you know, it's a metal. Um, difference between this one and the second one is this one's just gonna be a metal. And to apply it, uh, you just want to select the section. So I'm selecting the top ones, control space bar, until you've selected the uh, area. Uh, you select these, you assign the material, and now you can see these are metallic. So here's the uh, before and after, and this will make it look a bit uh, better. Okay, um, so we have the uh, beginning of our meter. Um, now let's make the needle, and then we'll make the little glass casing. So for the needle, um, you could just kind of remake the needle you saw in the beginning, or you could just replace it with a different needle. In my case, I'm gonna try to replicate what I saw a little. So I'm just kind of hovering it slightly over the uh, thing we made before. And in uh, edit mode, you just kind of rescale this thing. So you want it to be super long, but maybe not that uh, thick and probably not even uh, that long. Uh, take this, position it, I guess with edit mode so the origin stays in the middle, that'd be a little convenient for us. So do something like this. These two vertices, you scale them down kind of like a almost like a triangle, almost, I guess is a good way to think about it. Um, cool thing we can do, control B and then V, so bevel and then V uh, for vertices, C to clamp. Um, and now we've got a, a rounded handle. We can do this on both sides. Control B, V, beautiful, okay? Um, by the way, if some of your vertices are doing a thing where they're overlapping, merge by distance gets rid of the one <laughs> uh, redundant vertex that was uh, clamped there. Okay, cool. Uh, take this, extrude it up, uh, for this, you could use like uh, image texture project from view uh, nonsense, or because it's meant to be a single color, make a new material, make it a shade of black or red or something, and high roughness. Um, and you can see we now have a uh, needle. Uh, what we need to do with this, of course, is uh, get it to animate. Um, and that's just gonna boil down to rotating on the Z axis, cause you know, we have our origin in the middle. Um, so what I recommend doing, go to the first frame. If you're not, you know, blah, 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 blah. Uh, shift left click is, or left arrow, shift left arrow <laughs> gets you to frame one. I'm going to keyframe I rotation. So now I have a keyframe on the rotation. And the reason I do this is it shows up in the graph editor and then we can add in a modifier, like a noise and that is going to randomize it a bit, although uh, not visibly, and we're doing it on the wrong axis as well. That's the uh, X rotation. Z rotation is what we want, add a noise, and now you can see it's moving a bit. Um, so the position you want your needle to be randomly oscillating in uh, is something we can actually control to a certain degree. I mean, this is noise, it is meant to be random. Here's what we can do. Uh, this first slider is gonna be kind of like a spacing over time, so it's gonna make it slower instead of like super chaotic. So you can pick what you want to do there. Uh, the second slider is going to be the amplitude. So we're taking our original uh, rotation, our original Z angle, and basically replacing it with this curve. Instead, you could like add it um, to get it in a different position. You could subtract it, whatever. Uh, depth is just going to add a bit of sharpness to it. So this is a bit more like chaotic now. Um, this kind of makes it look more supernatural or something like you. You never see a meter doing something like this. Um, and then phase is gonna give us a, a random offset. Either way, super easy to animate and you can just like change these numbers a bit and like add and like change the uh, influence which is the strength of this effect. So you can have it slowly grow um, in its spontaneity. Okay, cool, uh, we've done that part. Uh, finally, let's make a, a nice little casing for this. By the way, uh, this part isn't technically correct, but it is a cool little detail. You take this image, 
use a bump, connect the thing to the bump, you have a normal map. Um, although, no, it, it, it works there on the metallic. What I was going to say is we also want to do it for the uh, rest of this. This is just going to make it so that the letters and markings and all that kind of cut in a bit deeper. And you can actually see it. Um, <laughs> if you see all this uh, fragmentation of the thing, just take your distance and bring it down uh, by a lot. Should be very close to zero. And that's just going to give it a bit of visual oomph. Um, and with the um, metal one, I'm just going to do the same thing. So something like that. Make the strength a little less because it's looking hella intense. And I think we're good there. Uh, let's make the glass and l l let's make it look good. So uh, before we do the glass, because glass is a cycles thing usually, we're going to switch to cycles, use GPU. Uh, because we want nice reflections, I'm going to load in an HDRI environment. So uh, go to environment, color, blah, 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 blah. I downloaded one from HDRI Haven. It's a good place to get them for free. Um, royalty free. You can like use them for whatever you want. It's a super cool CCO, whatever license. Just load in an HDRI. It will make it so that the lighting, you know, works. Film, transparent, beautiful. Um, to make the glass casing, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this uh, circular mesh from the uh, bottom. I'm going to, uh, I only, I don't want all of this nonsense. I just want um, this uh, loop. So I'm going to select the loop, shift D to duplicate on the Z axis by like one. I'm just going to put it somewhere else. Um, and I'm going to take this and separate it by selection so that this is now its own object. So this ring is by itself. Um, now what we could do is we can uh, turn this into a, a thing. So uh, I guess there's a couple ways to do this. I think easiest is I'm going to extrude on the Z axis just to make it kind of a cylinder, F to fill, um, and then I'm going to bevel this a lot. And that's just going to make a nice dome. And the height of the dome is uh, up to you, as we say. Um, again, run a merge by distance on this. And I'm going to move it. GZ minus one, since we moved it up one the first time, now we move it minus one, um, and we can fine tune this a bit. So first of all, shade smooth, just so it's smoothed. And uh, second of all, probably don't want it to be as tall. So you can uh, scale it on the Z axis from the uh, 3D cursor. It's gonna make that shrink. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, major issue, uh, we can't see anything because it's just like a opaque uh, cap on top of it. Uh, so for this, we're gonna make a, a new material. I'm going to call it glass. And what is glass going to be? It's going to be a uh, transmissive uh, type of surface. By the way, uh, make sure that this thing is like slightly uh, hovering above. Um, it's going to be a transmissive thing. It's going to be a thing with low roughness. And uh, what else? It's also got to be the only material on this thing. So make sure you delete the first material and boom, uh, we have glass. So uh, long story short, uh, transmission is what makes it see through. Uh, cool. Uh, roughness is what makes it like frosted versus, you know, this. Um, so what you could actually do, and this is just a bit of extra, if you want uh, the roughness to look a bit more varied, you can use a noise texture using something like uh, object coordinates. That's going to make it look more uh, uniformly uh, distributed. And then you just like plug this into the roughness and you want to do some like color ramping to make it like either or. Uh, so we can make a lot of this like zero roughness, which is to say fro or perfect glass, and then the rest of it can be white, which is to say frosted. So up the detail, up the roughness. So we're just adding in a tiny bit of detail here, um, and it's going to be a little hard to tell, but the roughness is uh, different on different parts of the glass. Um, and there you go. Uh, well, one other thing you can do, by the way, to make this more realistic is the glass should have a bit of thickness, so it can refract and all this. Um, just add in a solidify, and what this does in wireframe mode is it kind of creates a inner shell. So you can choose the thickness of the glass and all this. And uh, if the more thick you make it, the, the less light can pass through. So that's just a thing to keep in mind. But um, yeah, I mean, other than that, make your glass fully white. I didn't uh, include that. And uh, there is your meter. You play it, it looks realistic, and uh, you can quickly copy these and get like variations. So, so what I mean by this is I'm going to select everything hopefully everything's selected it's kind of hard to tell when you have like things on the interior uh, select everything select the meter control p to parent it to the object so now uh whoops well forget that what i was trying to do is i was trying to parent everything all at once whatever what i'm trying to do wireframe is a good way to select everything is just so show a quick way to get a variation so if i duplicate this you're going to see the needles are moving the same if you want them to be independent from each other you just go into the needle um, 
information, which again is in the graph editor. Uh, you can just change the phase to change the seed value. Now you can see these are different from each other, uh, but also we can give it different properties. So one can move faster and not as much and you know, whatever. And you have two photorealistic meters that you can stick on something and you could use the uh, speedometers and different images to get different meters. And this is a good uh, frame to show that frosted glass, by the way. Um, either way, that, that's the essence of the tutorial. Bit, bit of a frantic one but I think the information was uh, properly uh, conveyed. So hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully you learned something. Blend and all that is available on Patreon, of course. Thing on the left, right, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> here's the name of all 800 some patrons. They get access to the Blend files that I upload all the fucking time over the last uh, year or two. Uh, they get access to, to yeah, two tutorials early, so you could have watched this uh, earlier uh, than when it was uploaded because I uploaded it as enlisted, etc. Exclusive tutorial stuff like this all of that's on patreon link in the description check it out and uh, other than that. That's the show That's the show bye